Before we begin, I want to first acknowledge that the offices of eCampus Ontario are within the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat, and the Wendat peoples. I encourage you to take a moment to consider the land on which you have the honor and privilege of living, working, and learning. We will share a link in the chat to a resource that you can use to learn about the territories on which you live. I encourage you to use this resource and share your own land acknowledgement in the chat. Our agenda for today, um, first we will provide an overview of eCampus Ontario and the micro-credential initiatives that we're leading. And then we'll move on to a presentation um, from CanCred and an overview and demo of the eCampus Ontario passport. And then we will have time for questions at the end. eCampus Ontario has been engaged in work around micro-credentials and the alternative recognition of learning since 2017. Within the past year or so, there has been a huge increase in interest in the sector here in Ontario, but also across Canada. I'm going to touch on some of our early work in the space and what has set out the foundation for future activity, as well as talk about where eCampus Ontario is going next and what's possible for micro-credentials. The first initiative I'd like to highlight is the micro-credential toolkit, which is something that is coming soon and you can watch for. Um, the micro-credential uh, toolkit um, guiding principles um, were uh, to set a common and equitable skills accreditation that supports recognition and transferability across sectors with a clear role for employers. Um, we also wanted to um, make sure that the toolkit is designed and uh, inclusive of lifelong learner feedback and uh, centered pedagogy. Uh, it's also situated in and informed by local, national, and global context aligned with industry standards. Um, it's designed as a blueprint um, and guide to account for uh, different contexts and environments, and it's openly licensed um, uh, for open uh, development and open community. Uh, the second uh, piece that I would like to highlight to you is our community of practice. If you haven't already uh, joined, there is um, a, a large group that is now part of our community of practice around micro-credentials. And this is a space for Ontario practitioners, educators, employers to share success, ask questions, and work through the process of developing, designing, launching, and evaluating micro-credential programs. The group meets um, about monthly, and uh, in between meetings, we have a Slack channel uh, that is um, available for asynchronous collaboration. We also offer matchmaking partnerships. Um, so on our website, there is a form where we invite employers and post-secondary educators to, uh, to sign up uh, to tell us a little bit more about their interest in um, micro-credentials, and then we can use that information to make connections between uh, employers and educators. And of course, that's because of how important it is that uh, micro-credential programs are designed uh, with uh, competency and skill areas important to the labor market in mind when uh, educators and uh, post-secondary, uh, sorry, educators and employers uh, collaborate on micro-credential programs, there's really great outcomes uh, in the programming. Uh, and a, a little bit of information about micro-credentials. Um, uh, micro-credentials um, help make education accessible. Uh, they're affordable. They take less time to complete than full degrees and diplomas. Um, there's usually digital proof associated with micro-credentials. They're verifiable credentials from reputable organizations, so you can prove what you know uh, to current and future employers. And that, of course, is a big part of today's uh, presentation. And finally, micro-credentials can help you acceler accelerate your career. Many micro-credential courses are created with input from business sector to equip, uh, equip participants with the knowledge uh, to match employers' needs. Micro, uh, 
eCampus Ontario's Open Badge Passport is a free service for Ontario learners to store micro-credentials and digital badges from, from any Open Badges platform. And uh, with that, we're going to use the majority of our time today to, uh, to have a uh, overview and demonstration of the CanCred system. I invite you to uh, contact us, micro at ecampusontario.ca, if you have any questions about any of the projects that I've shared in today's introduction. And welcome, Don. Thanks for joining us oh. in today's session. Welcome. It took a, it took a while to get here from Ireland, I guess. <laughs> um, I think Don, do you have all of the uh, uh, presentation sharing capabilities that you need to take over the driver's seat today? Looks like I do. Um, a quick question: Should I be sharing my um, camera while I present or not? Uh, you're certainly welcome to. I I left my camera on while I was doing today's introduction. Okay. Okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll just leave it on then. Great. So I'll uh, share a screen here and get started. Can everyone see that? Yes, that's great, Don. Thank you. Great. Okay. So uh, thanks very much, Rich and uh, Sandra and Emma, and uh, top of the morning to you all. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, and apologies for not wearing green myself. I have a green screen, so that would look a bit weird. Uh, I hope the backdrop makes up for it. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to tell the e Campus Ontario community uh, more about this great resource that you have and how you can get so much more value from it. I have a good chance of doing that today because I'm joined by a very knowledgeable colleague and partner from across the Atlantic. Eric Roussel is a CEO of Open Badge Factory Solutions in Finland and the chief architect of the technology that powers uh, eCampus Ontario Passport and other CanCred solutions. Eric is an educational technology architect today, but in a former life, he was a French professor at the University of Oulu in uh, Finland. In the early 2000s, he formed a company around an innovative LMS platform that went across Finland and beyond and remains a dominant player in that country. Eric and his team began working on Open Badge Factory in 2013, inspired by Mozilla's Open Badges and the Epic ePortfolio conferences in Europe, where we met. Um, learning agents partnered with Open Badge Factory to introduce CanCred on Canadian servers in 2016. Uh, in 2017, CanCred worked with eCampus Ontario to implement the eCampus Ontario Open Badge Passport. Later that year, uh, we collaborated with them to develop uh, the first Ontario Micro Credential Forum, or Open Badges Forum, as we called it then. Uh, fast forward to 2022, here we are. Open badges and micro credentials have definitely become a thing, and eCampus e Ontario's Open Badge Passport is a very useful thing in our micro credential ecosystem, and that's what we'll be talking about today. Eric, um, can I offer you a chance to um, make some comments before we get started? Thank you very much, Don, for this presentation. It's a pleasure for me to to join you in this evening for uh, telling uh, a bit about. Uh, what we've been doing together uh, on CanCred and Open Match Factory and about uh, development of, um, of the passport. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, we'll be able to, to share this uh, presentation. I have a good, uh, I'm sure, important question from, from the participants. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Eric. I guess we're both in the wide open spaces. So that's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. so so um, the Passport is a province-wide service, as Rich said, run by eCampus Ontario for the Ontario post-secondary community. It's a free service for end users who can use it to store their badges and share them, typically to social media. 
the Passport currently gets most of its traffic from about a third of the institutions in Ontario who are using CanCred Factory directly. Um, but Passport can host digital open badges of all kinds, including micro-credentials, from a wide variety of platforms and providers, as long as they support the open badges standard. I often say that open badges are like PDFs. They're portable documents that can come from a diversity of sources because they're created to an open standard. Now, what we're here to talk to you about today is how your students and lifelong learners can get more value out of this platform. How it's not only a place to store and share, it's also a place to collect and curate, uh, to aggregate and build value and make social connections to advanced careers in the province. Today we'll show you how eCampus Ontario Passport is an effective badge wallet and, an even, uh, and even a great badge portfolio. By the way, Eric and I will be using the word badges a lot today as a short form for digital open badges, the Mozilla standard, that can include formal for-credit micro-credentials, uh, non-credit micro-credentials, industry credentials like the IBM ones, and even in informal badges. We see open badges as the container and credentials as the content. And every credential needs a good table of contents, but that's another webinar. Um, so eCampus Ontario was one of the first, Eric, or the first of what we call dedicated passports? Was it the first? Mm -hmm. I think it was the second one uh, just after HPASS. Ah, you... okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so, one of the first. One of the first, right. yeah. So these are large-scale white label platforms for um, uh, big communities to exchange and build value from badges. In the case of eCampus Ontario, it's the post-secondary community in Canada's largest province. In the case of EduPass, it's the K-12 system for the country of Luxembourg. Uh, for HPASS, it's the global community for humanitarian action and disaster relief. Uh, for IDB, it's the professional community serving international development across Latin America and the Caribbean. And uh, Atingi also has an international development mission, but on, on an even larger scale, uh, they want to support career-oriented learning for growing populations across the global south, starting from sub-Saharan Africa. So that's why we say that eCampus Ontario is in good company with its dedicated passport. And it's in a position to benefit from the practices and contributions made by these other global initiatives. Um, the agenda for today is pretty straightforward. We want to show you what's already been available on the passport that you might not know about. And then uh, what's coming very soon uh, with a peek at uh, where things are going. Um, please enter any questions in the, is it would be the chat or the Q&A would be best, um, um, Sandra or Nema? Either? Q&A is fine. Okay, great. As we go through, uh, we'll take a pause for a discussion partway through. And then again, at the end, we might uh, recruit uh, Alyssa Bigelow if, she, if she's in the audience for that uh, discussion partway through. By the way, uh, we put this um, presentation together with screenshots and simple animations just to keep things moving fast. Uh, but we'll be happy to demonstrate on the live platform as uh, time permits. So um, here's the login page that's uh, served us since 2017. Let's go inside. Um, the first thing you see when you log in as an end user or, or lifelong learner, I guess, is the dashboard. And we're showing the dashboard of Alex Erner, who is our go-to fictional exemplar. Um, at a glance, Alex can see the badges that they've earned recently, badges they can earn, and a snapshot of what's happening on the platform. As a good fictional exemplar, Alex has uh, completed their profiles. You can see by that uh, 1 or 100% on the green gauge. Um, let's take a closer look at Alex's current badge collection. Uh, there we go. So Alex has mostly earned Ontario Extend badges from eCampus Ontario, and those naturally flow to the eCampus Ontario Passport, as we showed you earlier. Uh, but notice the badge called I Did a Hard Thing. Um, this was earned from CanCred and was originally accepted on the generic CanCred Passport, just a, another pan-Canadian uh, alternative. Then Alex was able to import it here. Uh, let me show you how that was done either by uploading the badge or by copy pasting the link which could have come from the original hosted learning record of the badge or micro credential or from another display and sharing platform uh, such as uh, badger backpack 
Um, now let's take a look at one of the more significant badges, the Ontario Extend Empowered Educator Micro-Credential. It's public, so it's visible on the passport, uh, and it can be shared as a link or on social media. Um, let's see how Alex can share it to their profile on the world's largest professional network. Let's see how that goes. So LinkedIn has made this a bit easier than it used to be a few years back. So it's fairly simple now to save the micro credential to the licenses and certifications section of the profile. Um, but bear in mind that the micro credential has to share space with all lots of other content in the profile. And that sharing is according to how LinkedIn has decided things should be. For one thing, uh, the default is to show only the top three um, certifications in the section. Um, you can see the whole list by uh, clicking on it, and there it is. Um, the reaction we often get is, is, yeah, is that all there is? For one thing, uh, the list is alphabetical, and the milestone micro-credential is uh, uh, buried at the end. Of, what, what did they call that? Burying the lead? So, and the graphics are repetitions of the issuer's logo instead of the badge images. The logo is pulled from the issuer's so-called company page on LinkedIn. Uh, this is good digital profile for the issuer, maybe not as useful for the learner. Still, um, it does the, the job at putting it all out there on the world's largest professional network. But let's um, have a look at another option and how that can work with LinkedIn. So uh, back on the eCampus Ontario Passport, there's a whole um, profile uh, section that Alex can explore. Um, as we said at the beginning, Alex has completed uh, the basics of their profile. In fact, they've gone a little further. Um, they've uploaded a picture of themselves, um, written a short bio, and provided at least one social media link. Um, the recent badges is a def default block that can be switched on and off, uh, just so there will be something there on that profile page. Uh, but Alex has included a badge showcase uh, labeled My Top Micro Credentials. It could be labeled anything. Even further, Alex has created another page uh, linked by a tab in the profile to tell the story and show evidence of their Ontario Extend learning journey, as you can see here. So this sub page displays the Empowered Educator Micro Credential in more detail, um, as um, you can see, and shows the six steps that led to it. And you can drill into those steps to learn more. Um, so we can start seeing this as a simple badge portfolio and even add more tab pages if we like. Uh, the portfolio can be shared uh, in the eCampus Passport community itself or as a link on other websites, including, can you say, the world's largest professional network. Uh, LinkedIn's contact info section even has a portfolio option. So now we've combined the reach of LinkedIn with some customizability that's available in eCampus Ontario Passport. Um, by the way, uh, there's no limit to the number of pages Alex can have, and they don't have to be sub pages of the profile. They can be standalone uh, web pages uh, with a particular focus, such as skills needs of one employer, almost like a single page website or um, a rich media cover letter. I have an example of uh, that kind of page coming up. Um, but in the meantime, uh, let's have a look at these real examples of profiles on the passport. I actually um, reached out to everybody here. They're all okay with uh, showing their, their profile pages, which were public in any case. I think some of you might recognize a couple of people here. Um, Alyssa's profile is nicely filled out. It's another example of how you can mix badges and micro-credentials from multiple providers and platforms. Um, unlike a transcript, she's choosing what to show, but the credentials themselves are still verifiable. Uh, Monica's is, is interesting for me because of the Ontario College Math Association badges. OCMA is a voluntary professional association and is a great way for faculty to develop in community, uh, a bit like Ontario Extend. There's a lot of overlap, as you might imagine, between eCampus Ontario and the OCMA. Obviously, it's uh, important to include students, and I hope we'll be able to show many more over time. I wish uh, Carmela at uh, Mohawk all the best. Uh, she's done a great job with hers. And in general, I think more can be done uh, to guide students on how to curate their digital footprint and speak to their skills. 
Um, I've included Kyle Mackey, uh, partly for his mystery badge. Uh, my challenge to you all is to uh, see if you can find his badge in the Explorer section of Passport and learn what he did that was really all that hard. Uh, it's actually a, a good story about a particularly gnarly uh, piece of software. Um, so I've left this one for the end of the sequence. This is the more the sort of rich media page because it's a highly worked example of uh, badge and portfolio. Uh, wearing another hat, I've been a public advocate for open badges, open recognition since 2011. Uh, that's why the Open Recognition Alliance um, invited me to apply for an Open Recognition Ambassador Badge. I completed the application, I was awarded the badge, and similar to the Ontario Extend Badges, my validated, the information in my validated badge application is linked evidence inside the badge that can be read at any time, either by me or uh, by someone viewing the badge. As added value, someone else from the Open Recognition community has endorsed me for my badge. That's it right there. Um, Philippe is well known for his work in Badge Ola Normandie. He's actually uh, presented to the eCampus community in the past, so his endorsement carries some weight. Um, I've gone further and uh, created uh, this custom ambassador page that I still maintain to keep track of my sort of some of some of my sort of higher level activities, including webinars and badges I've earned along the way. It's a bit like a blog. Uh, today's webinar may be there at some point, who knows? Uh, that's another example of keeping a badge alive with ongoing evidence. Now, um, think back to Alex's or Alyssa's Ontario Extend empowered micro-credential. There's no reason why they couldn't add ongoing evidence of digital fluency in the same way. And that's why we say there's more to micro-credentials than stacking digital course certificates. I think I bore people when I say that all the time. Um, so shifting gears here, but still on the theme of socialization, um, another thing Alex can do is put themselves and their badges on OpenStreetMap. As a fictional exemplar for the passport, Alex has placed their profile roughly where the eCampus Ontario offices are located on Bay Street. Um, Alex is part of a community and this makes a great way to visualize that community and start to find connections through geolocation like what you see here, uh, badges themselves, the issuers of the badges and other ways of connecting, following people, following badges, etc. Um, Eric will be picking up on this theme in the next section about spaces. But maybe we can pause for a moment, take some comments, um, uh, maybe starting with Alyssa. I guess I'll stop sharing for the moment. Good morning. How are you? Hi How's there. everybody today? Good? Excellent. Um, I just accidentally checkmarked a question in the Q&A as, um, as answered because I, I was uh, taking a look at it. But um, uh, one of our participants asked if the, um, if the badges disappear or if students lose access after they graduate. And um, that's one of the really awesome things about um, the eCampus Passport is that it, it goes with them wherever they are. It doesn't disappear. Um, if you've got, if you use badges and awards within your learning management system at your institution, those can disappear and those, the, the students can lose access to those. However, with these open badges that are, that are in the cloud and they're stored kind of in a different space, the graduate never loses access to those, um, those credentials. So that's a huge advantage of, of the passport. Great. Well, thanks for handling that one. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. <laughs> Sorry, I felt bad because I hit the I hit the button. I just oh, um, all right. Um, is there anything in particular you'd like me to to share share through, or um, should I just kind of go with it? Um, yeah, I, maybe we can deal with the questions. Actually, do you want to just sort of kick off with with how you how you I guess uh, work with people and talk to them about the passport and how you've modeled yourself in it? Maybe just yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for the for the past few years, I've been working um, with the Ontario Extend program, uh, and most recently last year, I was um, a program facilitator for the program, uh, and. Um, we had um, several educators uh, complete the program and complete the modules. And when um, when you complete a module um, 
for Ontario Extend, uh, you're able to apply for and earn a digital badge. And once you claim those digital badges, um, they you get prompted to uh, store them in the passport, which is um, which is great because it, it you can put them somewhere uh, so that that you don't lose track of where they are. Um, so in through through the through the summer and the fall, um, we were sharing uh, that information with our Ontario Extend um, participants and and promoting the use of the passport. Um, the passport also uh, allows you to bring in badges from other platforms as well. Um, so in the um, in the image that Don showed earlier, um, I had I have uh, badges from uh, the Adobe Virtual Educator or the Virtual Reality Educator. Um, I have an Educause badge for developing high flex uh, courses, and I those those badges themselves are actually um, created and issued from the Credly platform. Um, but I've been able to bring those into my eCampus Ontario passport so that I have all of my badges from nowhere, wherever I've earned them all in one place. Um, the other really nice thing about the badges in the passport is that there's a super easy interface to use that you can um, make your badges public and share them out through your LinkedIn profile. Um, and over the years, it's, it's gotten much easier to use as well. Um, uh, when, you, when you claim a badge now, the, uh, the prompt to share it directly from that message comes up right away. So you can just go right to sharing your badge through LinkedIn. Um, the benefit with sharing your badges out through LinkedIn um, is that um, you know anybody that has access to your LinkedIn profile can scroll through your profile and when they get to the licenses and certifications component, they'll see a list of all the badges that you can bring in and you can share within your LinkedIn profile. And what's really neat about this piece is that you know if you're if you have uh, if you're job searching or you know you're interested to find out about somebody and what they've done and what they know, um, you can click on the credential and it will take you to the badge page uh, where your badge is stored. So all of my badges direct um, folks into the um, into the um, eCampus passport um, to see uh, the credential. Um, now the really awesome features about when you're looking at the badge page itself is that um, the uh, did you do you want me to bring it up just real quick or sure. it might be sure. easier to visualize? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're. I think this the... is my thing here. Oh, okay. Good. There we go. Okay. Um, so just really quickly, um, this is my dashboard when I when I log into my eCampus Ontario passport. Uh, so the URL is simply badges.ecampusontario.ca. Um, you'll need a username and a password to get started and then you're in. And um, this is the dashboard. So it gives you information about your profile. It gives you information about your badges. Uh, and here's this, the, the networking and, and connection pieces. We can like connect with each other through, um, uh, through the platform and see, diff see people who have earned the same badges as, as we have and, and you know, make those types of, of connections. Um, when you click into the badges section, this is where I was explaining how you can bring in badges from other places. Um, so I've got several different non-eCampus Ontario badges here, and I also have my eCampus Ontario badges in here. So it's just a big, um, a really nice storage wallet. Um, now, if we looked at LinkedIn, um, I've just got my licenses and certifications piece up here in the profile. And anyone can do this. You can click on, I'll just teach on, click on the, the teacher for learning badge here. And you see it just jumps right into the passport. And this is where your, your badge has its clout or its oomph with it. Um, this, this is where you get into the really good part. Um, your digital badge um, has some key information. Uh, it tells the, the viewer, eCampus Ontario issued this. So it's coming from a reputable source. It tells you what day it was issued on, who it was issued to. 
Um, there's the description of the badge and there is a list of the criteria um, that are required to be met in order to earn the badge. If you want to make double sure that, you know, this badge hasn't been tampered with or hasn't been altered with, um, because, you know, it is digital, people have Photoshop, you know, those kind of things, um, you can click on this, check this badge, and it actually um, reaches out to the servers where the badge is stored to verify that, yes, this is actually um, the original copy of this badge and that everything is good. Uh, the other incredibly powerful piece with this is the link to the evidence. So when I earned this badge, I had to apply for it. I had to submit work. Uh, I did work um, and submitted it when I applied for the badge. And anybody can come in in here and click on my evidence link, and it takes you directly to the links to my work. So if you want to verify and see, okay, does this person have the skills that they claim to have? here's the proof. Um, this is this is where the badge really has a lot of its power is, you know, you can earn certificates and stuff and 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 just sit there and kind of listen and, and, you know, you get the knowledge, but you may not necessarily be able to prove you have the skills. This proves you have the skills. Um, so this is extremely um, powerful for um, the badge component. Um, and my zoom bar is just right into the tab that I need to move. <laughs> so, always. always. Um, all right. So I just want to go back one screen if I can. Um, but I cannot get my tab here. Hang on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, there's my badge page. There's my badge page. Okay, so back on my badge page, um, the other really beautiful feature to this is um, badges have the capability to uh, receive endorsements from industry and from other partners within uh, the community. So with Ontario Extend, we actually have four different endorsement partners at the present moment. Um, and you can see these partnerships by clicking on the endorsements link. And when you click on the endorsements link, you'll see uh, Conestoga College has provided some supportive statements around the program and, and why they feel it's valuable to them. Uh, Georgian College, Fanshawe College, and Nipissing University have also um, contributed uh, positive supportive statements. So these statements help also um, give give support to people knowing you know you, you know it's valued within within industry and with within community so um i just wanted to point out those few pieces um for our viewers and um any any type of questions i'm happy to answer um when when they come in great thanks very much Alyssa. and okay. uh, i just realized i think i did something similar to you i i answered a said I would answer a question live, so I guess I have to. Um, and the question is, uh, what is required of an institute to have their micro-credential recognized on this passport? And the answer for that is it's up to the learner. Uh, it's up to the learner to upload uh, the credential if they wish to. Um, but Eric is actually going to pick up this question in the next section. So uh, these other questions, I think, are going to start to be answered. Um, so what we'll do is we'll pick them up uh, when, we, uh, when we get to the end. So um, let me, um, so I'm viewing uh, Lisa, if you can un, un, uh, un uh, share. Okay, mm. looks like I don't have to. Great, thanks. So let me share that again. Does everybody see the screen? Yeah. Great. So, um, over to Eric, um, and uh, Eric, I'll uh, continue to drive the bus if that's okay, yeah, and you can okay. Uh, you can talk. So um, I'll just do the the big build here and let you speak to it. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so uh, what I I will um, show you is now in uh, Newcomers Passport. Uh, you have the possibility to um, to create inside inside sorry um, the passport. You have the possibility to create spaces. So well, I don't know if I am 
in the right page uh, here. Well, this yeah, you you had something in a previous presentation where we were talking about linking together between factory and passport and putting badges into action. But maybe what I can yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Further, I can, yeah okay. Uh, yeah. The idea of uh, the space is uh, basically to have um, a deeper connection between the open badge factory uh, or concrete factory, which is a place where you can issue uh, badges with a passport. And uh, in the passport, um, the, the new feature uh, is what we call uh, spaces. And the uh, spaces are like passports inside passports. So inside eCampus Ontario, you could have different kind of, uh, we'd say, um, community spaces for, uh, for the, the members of, uh, of eCampus uh, Ontario. So, um, the spaces, why, why spaces? Because uh, many of our customers say, okay, <clears throat> Eric, it's great to have a passport with, with um, thousands and, and thousands of, of badge earners and, and, and uh, hundreds of, uh, of thousands of badges. And the problem is that we would like to have a clear view with our community and it will make meaningful for, for, for users. Uh, to to be able to to see the badges which has been issued by our organization, so uh, spaces are, are basically uh, community areas inside uh, uh, eCampus Ontario or is inside a passport which are dedicated uh, for uh, community members, but uh, that give um, uh, the possibility for the institution for the organization to manage what happened in this space. So basically, I, uh, Dan and Alisa show you that the passport is like a personal learning environment. You can create micro portfolios, you can, you can connect with spaces. The platform become, becomes a place where organization can really deploy uh, a strategy and um, uh, put their strategy, I would say, in, in, uh, in action. So we're speaking about the scaffolding for skill development. We're uh, speaking about um, uh, building pathways for, for the earners. Thank you. No. Okay. Uh, just a couple of branded login pages. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the space uh, can have and have um, a branded um, start page. So every every organization uh, that have its own um, uh, dedicated space uh, can set up its own uh, start page. And what you don't see here that there is also the possibility to have an SSO connection. So uh, for example, if a university has its own space, uh, you can have an integration with this SSO system of the university, meaning the students will not have to uh, create the account in the passport, they will be able to use the university um, uh, ID and, and to have an access, automatic access to uh, their passport. So here you see different kind of layouts. Yeah, and now for the for the users, for the member, uh, what you see here, it's uh, the same dashboard than that down show you, but now it's limited to to the space. So you see a filter view of the space with information only about your space. So the, the, the number of members you have in the space and number of badges you have in the space. And here you can see also uh, badges or badge application that you can apply for. So you can see it straight away on the first, first page. And if uh, we would have some news here, you would see also some news um, and of course, other members at this level. On the right side, as you see, you have still the, the personal view of, of, the, of the users, of the member, okay? So, uh, as I said before, uh, in this development, there is a very important uh, new, I would say, uh, dimension, which is that you can really connect your OBF account. So the place where you have, where your organization have um, has sorry uh, uh, the badges you can connect it with a space so you have an API uh, connection with a space and here you can see the badges that you can make accessible inside the space I don't go too much into details here but uh, in the space you have uh, you have walls 
administrator, creator, issuer, and members role. And, and, and the, the, the creator and issuers will be able to uh, issue badges inside uh, the space. And they will be able to issue badges that you have on your OBF account. So here, it's a very interesting way to have a distributed way to, to use badges. Uh, all your, your, let's say, teachers don't need to uh, go to Open Badge Factory for, for issuing a badge. They will be able to issue badges inside the space from Open Badge uh, Factory. And um, in your space, of course, you have the possibility to, to generate um, uh, maps, uh, open street maps, uh, that you will be able also to publish outside of, of the space. So if you have um, at, at your university some, some, some site where you, you want to display, showcase uh, the, the badges which has been learned in your community, uh, you can do that. Here in the, in the right side, you can see that you can also um, choose the badges that you want to uh, display on the map. So, so this could be like uh, Ontario Extend badges in Ontario, for example. Yeah, for example, in Ontario, and when you click, click on the the, the spots on the map, you will see the, the people who have got uh, these uh, these badges. So you will see the community. So, speaking of maps. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, Quite an important feature in the space is the ability to build uh, graphic uh, maps. Uh, you will see they look a bit like uh, metro maps. And this, uh, these maps can be used for different purposes. So for, let's say, we have example about lifelong learning, uh, work quickness, uh, onboarding, uh, professional development um, pathways. Uh, the idea, of course, is to, to, to make the, the, the pathway uh, visible and, 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 off, and here you have also the possibility to, uh, to monitor, so to, to track the, process, the, the, the progress of the learners on the maps. Uh, we provide a tool for, for, for building uh, this map. It's an online tool inside the, inside the, the, the space. And uh, you can build different kind of maps. This is just one example here. Uh, what I forgot to say that spaces don't have to be only a space for one organization. You could have also a space for several organizations. And uh, in this case, you can build uh, mini maps, pathways with uh, badges or badge application that have been produced by the partners. Uh, involved in the space. So we have, for example, in French, um, big French uh, development uh, program, it's professional uh, development program. Uh, they have um, mini maps created with, uh, with badges really created by several uh, organizations. So what uh, it's what I call hybrid, hybrid uh, mini maps. Uh, okay, here, here you can see the, the one mini map, a graphic, uh, Pathway here, with you have different kind of badges um, connected to these uh, nodes or to these um, stations. You can have several badges uh, as task uh, linked to station, and you can even have only text. You don't have, especially to have uh, always a badge connect to a station. So text, text with uh, links and and all this kind of stuff. And then you, when the this minimap. Is ready. You can publish it. Uh, I, I could say suggest it, uh, assign it to uh, to um, different kind of uh, users in your in your space, to all your space members, or even you can pu uh, publish them uh, in the passport in general. And then you can see on the right side the tracking. You can see the people who have been starting. Uh, the journey, and yet then you can see uh, if if you would click, for example, the, the first one, Catherine Pigeon. You click a uh, little icon there. You would see what are the stations that she has been uh, completing. So, okay. yes. So then, uh, yeah, and uh, 
what is interesting now in, with this, with space is um, that when, for example, I assign or propose some some uh, minimap or even badge application uh, uh, to some um, earner or a member of uh, of the space, then he or she will be able to to take it or not, and then this um, this uh, minimap for example will appear in his or her uh, objectives section. And in, in the objective section, um, members can also be proactive and, and basically select in the offering that you have in the space, different kind of you know, uh, objective or challenges or goals. So I want to be a better Java programmer before Christmas. I could find a batch application about being a Java programmer and, uh, and and let's say select it and put it in my objectives and I could write, okay, uh, the deadline is Christmas, for example. And then I can follow uh, what I'm appending uh, objectives, completed objectives and, uh, and deadlines, uh, coming uh, deadlines here. Right. So it's, so it's a bit like building your own learning playlist, as it yeah. were, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a learning playlist there. So this is this is the big finish um, slide for you, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Oh, let me so, go back and uh, show all yeah. those things. Yeah. Okay. So here you see there is a in in um, in the passport now you have you have three dimensions. You so you have the personal environment dimension uh, that uh, Alisa and, and Don have been showing you. So you can receive your badges, you can set up your profile, you can create a micro portfolio, you can create even self-claim badge. So it's your personal uh, environment for every le learner in, in the passport. And then from the very beginning in the passport, you have your community. So you can, you can be endorsed as Alisa showed, you can have endorsement on, on your badges. You can connect with with uh, other. You can follow other users of the passport and so on. As I said uh, today, uh, the space is very interesting because it's basically bringing, giving a role to um, institutions, to organizations in the passport. So, uh, with the space, organizations get the possibility to assign, suggest different kind of pathway. Uh, the, there is a possibility to um, set up objectives. There is a scaffolding, uh, the assessment, and what is very important, it's management and tracking. So we are now working on this late, latest um, uh, point here. So the idea is to build for the organization a very good dashboard where you could see your objectives at your community level. So uh, we want that all our students get the onboarding, first year of student get the onboarding badge before Christmas. And then you could see the gap between your, your, your goals and, and what has been the achievements. So, so the idea of the space is also to provide all the data that the organization, the institution needs to also assess and um, evaluate the the impact of the of the micro credential strategy so are we are we doing well with the strategy do we need to have some some changes do we need to complete it and uh, the messaging now it's uh, uh, currently missing but we are now developing this instant uh, managing uh, and the possibility to have group uh, messaging uh, uh, features inside the space because of course if teachers are using the, the space for providing different kind of goals you want that, that they, they are able to uh, address uh, send some message uh, some reminders to uh, to the students for okay yeah so at the center you have always the learner it's, it's uh, the philosophy of, of the passport it's that you have the learner and we combine these three uh, dimension and now what what is um, interesting it's um, uh, we can now uh, connect in the future, we will be able to, to, to connect different kind of services to spaces. So if, uh, let's say, if it's a space about uh, professional de development, we could have uh, using an API um, uh, a connection with, with a local job opportunity service or 
if uh, or we, with some training organizations and uh, and coaching services and, and so on. So, and this possibility with spaces, it gives for each customer the possibility to have its own integration. It's, it's all already coming, but it's not, not, it has not been yet very much implemented. And now for some real science fiction. Yeah, well, um, I don't know if it's science fiction. So it's uh, you have the machine learning uh, possibility, and you know, with uh, digital credentials, uh, uh, I think that uh, I have heard for many years about these uh, machine learning uh, possibilities. Uh, the problem that when when the context is not really well defined, uh, it's not very meaningful to to mine to you know uh, information. But now with the space, you have the, the possibility to, to have badges which are in relations in relations with each other. You have learners or a community which is basically also working in a very uh, clear context. So um, uh, there will be soon the possibility to basically suggest uh, different kind of uh, badges or pathway based on what happened inside. Uh, the space. So let's say that, for example, if Don, Don has got some some badge about uh, managing, and I, I'm colleague of of Don and working with him, um, I have nearly the same badges. I could have a suggestion. By the way, you should you could be interesting in this badge. But of course, if I have badges uh, with some topics, uh, of course we could mine the information and show. Okay, you you, you could be interesting by this and this complement. Thing, you know, uh, pathways or, or badges. And we have already introduced a new feature a few months ago that uh, you can see um, it's not machine learning, but you can already see that if you have a badge which is related, which has been used or is, is used in a minimap pathway, you will see uh, a tab related to, and you will see all the different pathways where you, the badge that you have got is basically use, meaning that you could engage in new pathways based on the badges that you have already got. Okay. Great. So uh, that takes us to the end of our end of our presentation. Um, I'll leave this up here for a few seconds, but uh, maybe maybe I should uh, have a look at uh, questions as well. Um, how do you want to handle this, Emma and Sandra? Hi Don, it's Rich. Uh, thanks very much for uh, thanks very much for uh, your presentation. That was amazing. Um, uh, we do have five minutes left for questions. So Don, what I might propose is um, if you have access to the the Q and A um, panel, please feel free to um, to to jump in and answer any of the questions that. Um, uh, that you uh, you know the answer to, and then we have uh, Emma on 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 the microphone, ready for anything that uh, would be best for for her to answer. Okay, so I'll I'll try and uh, uh, go through these in order. Um, partially answered the one question, which is what's required of an institute to have their micro credential recognized on the passport. Basically, a learner uploads it or uh, they present it in a space, uh, especially if they are connected. One point we'd like to make about the spaces is that uh, there's normally, um, if you're on CanCred or if you're on um, Open Badge Passport, you would normally have to pay for a space. Because eCampus Ontario, this is, a, this is their service. Um, there are three spaces that are open to key campus Ontario already. Uh, there would be another space for every um, pro user of CanCred. Um, normally a charge for that, but as I say, uh, would be um, included in the in the freight. And for others who don't currently have a presence on CanCred, we can have conversations, but we need to work through uh, some details of that. So, um, what's um, basically why is the passport system required for micro credentials as opposed to the traditional transcript? I think I made a point in one of the slides saying basically it's learner driven. So it's the learner at the center. The learner decides what to share. It's not the transcript as laid out from the institution. That said, that the the credentials themselves are still verifiable from the original issuers, but they can also pull them from different sources. So that's the advantage of that. Um, 
does the institute need to be using an automated badging system to access? Well, as I say, it's up to the learners to upload them. Uh, there are other conversations that can be had about uh, bringing uh, badges into um, eCampus Passport. Um, and any plans to include all credentials, not just micro-credentials? Currently, no. This is an open badge passport. You have that other system, MyCreds, which is um, uh, going across Canada through, through the registrars. So the larger diplomas and things like that are going to be available there. Uh, we think it's a large ecosystem and there are going to be different platforms serving different needs and different audiences for people. Um, so uh, one, um, one of them at Wareforce, um, ba, 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 usually PDF generated some little metadata. When an employee leaves a company for a new employer, they often have to redo those credentials. Do we work with, it? well, this, that's actually one of the great use cases of, uh, of uh, micro-credentials is um, to make these credentials more portable. That said, uh, you need to have an issuer who's willing to do this, so an employer who's willing to uh, issue a credential for that, or somebody else who would take it and say, yes, I, I recognize that the person has this, I'm going to issue a badge around this, and actually World Educational Services has a, has a service around that, and other companies could be doing that as well. Uh, it's a bit like the, the credit bank uh, function in uh, BC right now. Uh, notice that older empowered educator badges do not have the institutional endorsements. Ah, so um, that is a feature, not a bug. Uh, basically, the endorsements are what's there as the badge is issued. So originally, there was only one endorsement from Conestoga, I think, and now there are four endorsements that, per, that those are baked in as they're issued. So unfortunately, you can't retroactively add endorsements. It doesn't mean you have to retake it. It's just mm -hmm. it doesn't have as the older one doesn't have as much credibility as the newer one. Um, I view a list of micro credentials. Well, uh, eCampus Ontario has the micro credential uh, portal, uh, so that's we we look forward to working with that. Um, fees for technical requirements from the institute. As I say, this is a, a service offered by. Uh, eCampus Ontario for its members. Uh, obviously, um, um, institutions who are using CanCred Factory Pro already have an advantage, uh, but others can participate. Can a student unshare a badge? For sure. Um, mm -hmm. It's totally up to the learner how that works. Uh, I'm not understating password. Do they first need their housed by someone like eCampus Ontario. So they have their micro-credentials hosted on whatever platform they issued them from. Could be CanCred, could be uh, BC Diploma, whatever. The student's version of that credential that they want to share can be uploaded to eCampus Passport. That's, that's how it works. They're not forced to share it there. It's a choice they make and a place where they can collect and curate their credentials that can be actually uh, the actual records for those credentials are, can be in various places. That's amazing. Um, Thank you, Don. Okay. Eric, All right. And Alyssa. <laughs> I think I got to the end. <laughs> uh, I think our last question is, will the recording be available? The uh, Yes, we will circulate a recording. Um, and, uh, and thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you again, Don, Eric, and Alyssa, for uh, participating today and doing such an amazing job at covering uh covering our systems end to end it was uh very very thorough really appreciate your time great it was wonderful to be here thanks for the opportunity take care